The biggest mistake, and I know I'm guilty of this as well, is we don't communicate our needs and we expect them to predict it. No, it's my pleasure. I mean, I've seen a lot of your things and I think it's really important to talk about yeah. relationships, especially femininity, which you yeah. talk about a lot. Can you explain uh, the term femininity and why you believe it's so crucial? I, do you know what? I always didn't really understand the need to discuss femininity. I thought it was just innate and in us. But as I've gotten older and as I've seen society change, I realized that femininity is becoming a forgotten concept, especially when I was teaching students. I remember when I first started teaching students, they were very feminine. And then over the course of a few years, they got more and more... Um, they started they started to see a femininity as a defect they started to see being nurturing kind caring considerate compassionate all these beautiful traits of femininity they started to see that as a weakness and i was wondering where it was coming from and you know i think a lot of it is to do with the education system it kind of makes especially with english teaching they teach you a lot about female empowerment yes. but in the process of female empowerment they see it as rejection of femininity and rejection of nurture and rejection of gender roles but i uh, I find that gender roles are what makes us beautiful. It makes us essential. If I do everything a man does, he no longer needs me and I no longer need him. And life is about connections and codependency to some mm -hmm. extent. And um, we need each other. Men, women, children, everyone, we all need each other. This is the measure of happiness. So if we reject femininity, we reject the one trait that makes us special mm -hmm. as a woman. And how do we become more feminine? Because I find sometimes, especially in Dubai, yeah. your masculine energy comes out. Absolutely. You need to have this fire and this mm -hmm. drive. How do you have, like, say, three tips on how we can be more feminine? I would say the first one is receiving. I know lots of people think that, you know, being feminine is giving and doing lots for people. Absolutely. But one of the masculine traits I know I've had over the years is I don't accept help from anyone. I don't ask for help from anyone. I think it's bad to say, like, can I borrow this? Or can, can you help me with this? I always just don't ask for anything. But the reality is part of being feminine is uh, receiving. If somebody wants to give, if somebody wants to love you, if someone wants to be there for you, let them in. And part of what's happening, especially when you start working more and you become more independent, is you feel like, no, no, I don't need it. I'll be fine. I'll do it. No, no, I don't want to be a bowler. Receive. You deserve it. You deserve somebody looking after you because when we reject people looking after us, we then become in survival mode yes. and we get tired. Mm -hmm. So then we get like rejecting of all the other things that like make us feminine. So I think the first step is always to receive. Second one is nurture is a great one. You know, nurturing, what I would say nurture is, is predicting people's needs before they say it and providing an answer for it. Mm -hmm. So it could even be your mum's tired and be like, do you want me to give you a massage, mum? Or do you need a coffee, mum? Or it, it, with your dad or with your partner. I know people feel like it's a bit negative when you do it with your partner, but I do think uh, it's what makes us so unique to men is that we can predict people's needs without them saying it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell us. We know you're tired. We know you might be hungry. We know that you, our baby's going to cry in five minutes. So predicting people's needs with, uh, before they're saying it and reacting to it is a really feminine trait. I would say that's a really feminine trait. Mm -hmm. And the final thing I would say is having um, boundaries. I would say trying to become like a man mm -hmm. and trying to allow, um, you know, becoming as masculine as possible is going to remove your femininity. So have boundaries with yourself. Make sure that you are remaining uh, in touch with your true needs rather yes. than being in survival mode and strong, independent. What are your true needs? Most women's true needs are to be loved and to love yeah. and staying close to them. And it's, it's quite a simple concept, but we complicate it, right? Yeah. Um, what common mistakes do you think some women make when it comes to relationships? I think the biggest mistake, and I know I'm guilty of this as well, is we don't communicate our needs and we expect them to predict it. So what I mean by this is, say, for example, we want to see somebody more often. We will say, I'm not going to ask you, I'm not going to say it because he should just know. If he wanted to, he would. But the reality is when we don't communicate our needs, we teach people the wrong way to love us. If, I'd, if you're late every time you pick me up and I don't say anything in that process because I don't want to look needy or I don't want to look clingy or anything like that, I'm teaching you it's okay to do that. Or if, I, if a guy is going more forward than you would like physically, uh, <laughs> this might be a little bit controversial, but I do think m the men in Dubai don't desire the more wholesome looking for a relationship kind of woman. They desire that transient woman 
who's here for a lifestyle and then will leave when she's got it. The, right. the woman that's actually looking to start a family and start a connection and stay here and build a home, there is very few options for that woman. But the woman who's here on holiday who wants a good party and wants to go on a boat and wants a Cartier ring, she's in for a treat. And so what happens is the women that actually are building something here, have a career here, yes. have a friendship network here, they will find it really difficult. But a girl that's on holiday, she'll find it the easiest place in the world to find love. So how do we partner here in Dubai? Oh, I know. <laughs> this might be a little bit controversial, but I do think the men in Dubai don't desire the more wholesome, looking for a relationship kind of woman. They desire that transient woman who is here for a lifestyle and then will leave when she's got it. The, the woman that's actually looking to start a family and start a connection and stay here and build a home, there is very few options for that woman. But the woman who's here on holiday who wants a good party and wants to go on a boat and wants a Cartier ring, she's in for a treat. And so what happens is the women that actually are building something here, have a career here, have a friendship network here, they will find it really difficult. But a girl that's on holiday, she'll find it the easiest place in the world to find love. So how do we change that? I mean, is that something that I guess men have innately here or I mean, how do we change it? I think for any environment which is um, catering to our pleasure makes people pleasure seekers. Yeah, because I know Dubai is the best city in the world, but I, I like pleasure. So I love the fact that I can walk around and there's beautiful lights everywhere. The, there's fountain shows, it's fireworks, it's pleasure. Everywhere you go, it's just stimulation. Mm -hmm. And when an environment is so stimulated, it's very difficult to accept um, monotony. Yeah. It's very difficult to look for a wife where it will be just sitting at home, you know, playing with the kids and, you know, going to see the in-laws. That starts to become a distant dream. Whereas going out every night, going here, seeing this, shows, this, that and the other, that becomes the norm. So unfortunately, we are replacing peace with pleasure in Dubai right. because it's so, so great. And the downside of that is people find it hard to be bored. So what's your advice to women who are struggling to find a healthy relationship here? I would say um, remain true to your true needs and your true desires and your true outcomes. Mm -hmm. The reality is if what you want in life is causing you to have less options, if you compromise what you want, you're only going to set yourself up for divorce anyway. Yeah. If you think, I, I, you know, for, yeah, I can't find anyone, let me just try this different lifestyle or let me just try this different type of guy, you're just prolonging the divorce and loneliness. Mm -hmm. It's still going to catch up with you. Yeah. But if you remain loyal to your true and core needs and values, it might take longer to find it, but once you find it, it will be more sustainable. So I would say try and say, and I know it's difficult in this day and age, it's so difficult. You feel lonely, you feel tired, you feel like everybody else has found someone. Mm -hmm. You see women of very different kind of li backgrounds getting all they want yes. in life and you start to lose motivation. But the, uh, with, in, our, in my language, there's a, a, an expression that when, when something comes quick, you, it goes quick. So yes. it's uh, unfortunate, it's a, a longer road, but it, the outcome will be better for you, inshallah. So,